A Letter Arrives by Courier from Prince Alexander at the Academy To King Philip, the Founder My tutors orders me, ordered me to write this letter to you. I have little time for you, but this must be done. Signed, Alexander. He is now a student. And I guess this is... Ah! <clears throat> So we're getting disrespected by our kids. Oh, we should choose a governor. So she's corrupt. Guess that's not something that was uncommon at the time in a governor or now <clears throat> if you want to get into politics. Last governor plus 50% as leader. Opinion frugal, righteous, corrupt. So I guess I might be a good choice. I but King Philip, the founder, might be a good choice. Since we get two growth. We get civics, training, and money. So let's go with that, I think, for now. I think like since I don't really know how much of this works, I will keep my warrior kind of close. And let's head out with this one. So it looks like we found maybe a new urban area. Yes, and the year again. Rural yields. The rural yields are food, iron, stone and wood. They are primarily drawn from rural implements and collected in the global stockpile. You can spend money to purchase rural yields directly from the top bar where it shows your current stockpile. The primary source of food is farms, which are the most fruitful next to freshwater and on lush terrain. Food is needed to feed your population and to produce new settlers. The primary source for iron of iron is mines, which are most productive on ore and hills. Iron is needed to produce many types of military units, including warriors and axemen. The primary source of stone is quarries, which are most productive on marble and arid terrain. <coughs> one adjacent to mountains. Stone is needed primarily to build improvements such like shrines, city projects, like walls. Forestry tech enables the construction of lumber mills on trees to produce wood. Workers can also cut down trees with the axe button in the action panel. Wood is needed to build city improvements like barracks. Military units like archers and ships, ship units like BRMs. So I should build more farms, I guess. Ah, uh, 
guest to the uh, banquets. Oh, it's still building this farm. And now we have plus five food. I don't know if we want to actually build more farms right now. It might be better to build this Odeon. Because we can always build this quarry over here. Let's do that. Get some more culture in our lives. <laughs> yeah. Sentry. Be interesting to have a look over here. We get some elephants. Get money if you harvest them. We have some horses. This might be a good place. It only has one urban area though. What do we have at this city side? Not a lot. This is also kind of starved for resources, I think. <clears throat> oh, we get some camels. Let's take a few steps down here as well. Horses. All of these guys are building. Ooh, tribe contacts. You met your first tribe, the Danas. Tribes can be engaged in limited diplomacy, but generally won't be coordinated in the way opposing nations are. You may also find barbarians when exploring the map. They do not behave like tribes, as you are always at war with them. Barbarians are good targets for early expansion as they are easier to drive away than more organized tribes. Finding barbarians or a weak tribe and claiming their city sites for yourself will be an important step towards growing your nation. <clears throat> Alright, so the Danes... Can I work with them somehow? No, apparently not. It's a truce, apparently. Ah, uh, we have the law, oldest child. There are some laws. We have our kind of game log. Ah, uh, here we have a research tree. Ooh, this will take some looking into. <coughs> Exploration. Because we are, what are we researching? Crafting currently. What does that even lead to? We get Slinger and we get Rally Troops. And Barracks. Yeah. Basic, I guess. Stone cutting, we already know. Drama we already know, it seems like. Holy. Ask a nation to declare war on another nation requires these walls. Hamlet. <coughs> Divination. Oh, 
sovereignty. Forestry. Ah, lumber mill. So we probably want to go police and get some lumber mills. Court scholar, enlightenment, spread chance per year. We do have a lot of woods. Yeah, let's end the year for now. A specialist can be recruited from the city screen by clicking the plus button on an improvement so long as you have an available citizen. Although improvements are already proactive on their own, the specialist can boost their yields. Luxuries are special resources that you acquire by adding a rural specialist to an improvement on the correct tile. For example, you access gems by adding a minor specialist to Ah, okay, so. If you have luxuries, you need to have a specialist on your improvements. I'll recruit some specialists in this Maybe. I think we definitely want to build. Get the quarry up and running. Can stay positive. Yeah, nothing really super exciting over here. <coughs> Seems kind of empty. And here we get some lavender. Yeah, let's finish it off. We get some honey and gems. This feels like it would be an awesome place to get access to. Yeah, let's end the year. Self-assured and assertive, Prince Alexander, our son, exudes an aura of confidence. He has gained one charisma. The capital has finished training a new settler. Settlers are key to expanding your nation because it only can found new cities. Take this settler to a nearby city site to establish a new city. City sites can be claimed prior to sending a settler to colonize them. Place a unit of any type on the city site to claim it as your own, thereby preventing foreign settlers from founding a city here. When you found a city, you will have to choose which family to grant it to. This family will provide a powerful boost to the city. After granting a city to a third distinct family, you will lose access to your, to your nation's fourth family. So carefully consider what bonuses you want and which family you can go without. <coughs> Prince Alexander has returned from his philosophy studies, but he would like to retain a tutor for additional training. What shall be the focus of his continued education? How to spread knowledge to others, he gains charisma. How to turn inward and self-discovery, wisdom. Okay, yeah, let's go with wisdom. So, where should we build our city? Horses would be good, I guess. More goats and horses. If we build over here, we're not really getting any new resources. And over here, we're getting game. 
So I think we'll build our next city over here. This feels like a good place. <coughs> Let's continue doing some exploration over here. Citrus, that's nice. And we got barbarians, not so nice. Four more turns. I think we'll take one of our workers and I guess we'll also move our warrior Some new production Let's go with... This content is not too high. We shouldn't do anything like that. Like the festival here would reduce... Increase growth and reduce... I guess... Because this is... Growth. Because we're only at 15. This would reduce by 20. <clears throat> Might be good to just get a militia. On the other hand, that would consume our Might want a warrior. Actually, we might want to get a trapper once this is done. Let's do this. Let's get the poets. Get some early bonuses going. You've encountered a rival nation. Rival nations are your primary opponent in Old World. You may engage them diplomatically, which could lead to gaining a powerful trade partner and ally, or declare war on them to conquer their territory. You decide which nations are worthy of being your allies, and which should simply be conquered. At some difficulty levels, other nations begin the game already established with a number of cities, units and improvements. If you hover the mouse over Katarsh's name in the leaderboard at the top left of your screen, you can find out important information about them, such as number of cities they have, how strong their military is, how developed they are technologically, and also with whom they are currently at war or peace. To conduct diplomacy, you must appoint an ambassador. All right. <clears throat> so they are ahead of us. They have two cities. So it's not looking like they are a lot. And so let's continue our little exploration over here. <coughs> Get some more legitimacy and we found Tuya Woodland.
You are now known as Philip the Explorer, Explorer, political prisoner. Our scouts encounter part of Persian soldiers whipping a man bound by his wrists and ankles. The warriors accuse the man of inciting rebellion, of stalking members of the royal family and attempting to infiltrate the treasury. However, the victim insists that he is innocent of the crimes. The Persians urge our men to move along and mind their business. <coughs> So we have just contacted Persia. So we can follow their advice and move along and gain some opinion with Persia. We will gain cruel, which kind of sucks growth wise, as we are the governor. Fight them for position, possession of the prisoner. So we get the court minister. But we'll gain minus 40. King Philip Explorer becomes cunning. <coughs> uh, yeah. New court minister Antigonus has joined the court. His aptitude in matter of state will keep Greece moving forward. Antigonus is court minister. And he has builder, discipline, charisma and discipline. Yeah, all right. Welcome to our little party of misfits. Let's continue with our settler. Yes, you want to move along? I guess you might not have enough movement points. Legitimacy, our cognomen has changed to explorer. The cognomen describes your recent accomplishments. Acquiring a cognomen is a one way of increasing your legitimacy in the eye of your people. Higher legitimacy grants you additional orders and improves your standing with your families. Keeping your legitimacy high is important for controlling a large name. nation. Yes. <coughs> And I guess our court can we do Okay, don't want to wanted to do but sure contact we've got new courtier new bonus effects we got an achievement and we checked out turn summary so let's end the turn let's see if we can get this new city up and running Prince Alexander will do whatever it takes to get what he wants. He is ruthless. Okay. Trapping discovered. So let's do the victory this time. 
So we have wrapping now. We could go for military drill. Get barracks. Rally troops. Pasture might be nice. <clears throat> we are gonna get horses now. That might also be nice. So I guess this requires horses. Yeah, it does. And it leads to horsemen. I think we'll go with husbandry. Or, because we have goats and pigs. And horses. Soon we have horses. And what do we want to have here? Add luxury literature. Random technology is kind of, I don't know, interesting. City defense, maybe. I think we'll go for random technology. Divination, that's kind of nice. <coughs> Cities produce the following yields. Growth training, civics, money, science, culture, and discontent. Growth training and civics are all used for city production. Growth for civilian units, training for military units, and civics for projects and specialists. When not being used for city production, training and civics go to the global stockpile and growth goes into the production of new cities. Culture and discontent both go into their respective progress bars. When culture bar fills, a positive event occurs and new improvements and wonders are unlocked. When the discontent bar fills, maintenance goes up and growth and science goes down. Money and science both go directly into the global stockpile. Alright. A shrine to Hades. That sounds ominous. So we have good food already. What do we have here? We could build a wart mine, garrison, odium, quarry, rhines, hanging garden, finds us who? Hades. Ah, alright. That might be interesting. Some mythology could be fun. Yeah, we have three mountains here. Might be a good place. The workers moved on to tree tile. Workers can spend one order to cut down trees with the axe button. Tile in question does not have to be in your territory. Once cut down trees take some time to grow. If you build an improvement on a tree tile, the wood is automatically harvested as the land is cleared. <coughs> All the cost of tree order. Eventually you can research the forestry tech to enable construction of lumber mills. Which are more regular and sustainable resources of wood. So, however, they must be built on tree tiles. So don't cut down all of your forest. You can spend money to purchase wood. Alright. So let's build a shrine. That might be fun. There's some people up the Hades. <clears throat> I kind of want to see. Can I see how strong they are? Three and two. And we are at. Oh, we are four strong. So let's go up and see if we can bully them into a fight. <clears throat> Let's 
is discontent rising. Connect. Yeah, let's do some more discovery here. And maybe over here. Ah, oh, we have another barbarian outpost. Maybe we should have kept our warrior closer. <laughs> What should we make? <clears throat> Costs 40 civic. Let's do a festival. Upon completing the research for a new technology, you will unlock the next technology on the tree. Entering it into the discard pile, and four new cards will be drawn from the Draw a pile of available technologies for you to select from. Okay, interesting. After making your new selection from the four drawn cards, the remaining three cards will be sent to the discard pile. Ultimately recycled back into the draw pile when it's empty. Three unit and bonus cards are never recycled. Alright. Interesting. <clears throat> Ah, we have a new heir, Duke Claystenes. Training strong heirs will be vital for the survival of your nation as once your current ruler is gone, someone will need to take the reins. Once your heir has grown up a bit, you'll be able to choose an educational path to guide them into the role you need them to fulfill. The first four heirs in the succession are members of your court. And their rating will affect your global yields. For example, an air with high wisdom will increase your science. Nice. End year. <clears throat> Judah is founded in Bactra. One of our scribes have returned from Bactra, Persia, excitedly talking about the practices of Judaism. She fills the court with stories of a god who gifts his followers with words written on stone and an ancient line of kings hailing back from past your own ancestors. Members of your court seem impressed and curious. Will you support this new religion? <clears throat> yeah, we want to form our own religion. You have unlocked the ability to choose an ambition. Ambitions are goals that your families would like for you to pursue and completing them will grant you and all of your descendants a permanent boost to legitimacy. Completing an ambition unlocks a new one and completing 10 is one way to win, win via ambition victory. So always do your best to fulfill your current ambitions. Here are a couple of simple ambitions to get you started. Control four cities, kill five enemy units. Four cities sounds like it should be fairly doable. <coughs> I don't really know that we need to build we have plus food. I guess we could harvest some trees or we can just not use our worker right now. What is this? Silver. Interesting. <clears throat> we might want to harvest gold, I guess, but we don't really probably have anything that is close by enough. We don't have husbandry yet. That's still building. We have a new city site we can check out. This seems like a nice place. Marches. Some wheat. Should 
probably explore this portion of the map a bit more. <clears throat> so we have more games. First to discover this landmark, what will you name it? Oxus River. Yeah. Right, let's end the year. <clears throat> 